hello and welcome to today's lesson so note that in our previous lesson we talked about complex differentiation and today we are going to talk about analytic functions so let's take a definition so this is a very important concept in the study of complex analysis we would want to know whether a given function is analytic or not so definition so we say a certain function f of z is analytic on the open set u if f of z is complex differentiable at each point of u and the complex derivative f prime of z is continuous on u so this happens to be the definition for when we see a function f of z is analytic let's move on <laughs> So, we now discuss the Cartier-Riemann equations since these are the equations which will help us to identify whether a given function is analytic or not. So, we use the Cartier-Riemann equation to identify whether a function is analytic or not. And it's very important. Okay, so we are going to derive the Cartier-Riemann equations and it's okay for you to know how to derive it right but the most important thing is we are going to use the formula that we are going to get at the end of the derivation to be able to check whether a given function is analytic or not but let's go through the, the derivation is very important because um in some instances you might be asked to prove it but otherwise you just have to know the last equations we come out with so the Cartier-Riemann equations how to derive it so let's suppose we have a complex function here which is f is equal to u plus iv and this particular function is analytic on a domain d so we fix a point z which is in our domain d so let's assume this is our domain d all right so we fix a point z which happens to be in d so we then compute the complex derivative and you should know from our previous lesson that in computing the complex derivative this is the formula that we use and because in this case we have <coughs> real parts and we have an imaginary part so you can see these are real parts and these are imaginary parts we're going to compute our complex derivative in two ways okay so you see when we draw our plane for complex numbers this happens to be the real part and this happens to be the imaginary part <coughs> so we are going to compute the derivative of this particular function here in two ways and one thing that you should know is that our u here is a function of x and y and our v here is also a function of x and y okay i hope you understand up to what up to where we've got into all right so we are going to compute the complex derivative in two ways because we have the real part and we have the imaginary part so the first thing that we do is that we let um our change in z to be equal to change in x that's for the real part right then for the imaginary part we will let our change in x be equal to i times change in y that's the imaginary part so that means you are going to compute our complex derivative along this line and that so two different ways so this is going to yield two expressions for our complex derivative which will then lead us to finding our Cauchy-Riemann equations so the first step is that we let change in z be equal to change in x so when we do that we will obtain what we have here all right but we are just taking everything from our formula for the complex um, derivative okay so we are taking everything from this particular formula here all right so just that in the first case we are replacing the change in z here with change in x 
so in doing so we have f then z plus change in x over minus f of z over change in x so you should know that in normal circumstance we would have half change in z here change in z here but we are just replacing that one with change in x all right and that is going to give us this particular equation that we have here you should know that like i said u was a function of x and y but now the changes is occurring at the s line so that means that wherever you find s it will be s plus change in x and we have this so take a look at it for some time realize that it makes sense okay so after getting this then we try to group the real part at one side and the imaginary part at another side so you can see that we have i here and i here so these are the imaginary parts and these two are the real part so we group them so when you group them you are going to have what we have here for the real part and what we have here for the imaginary part so you realize that we just group like terms here right so after this what we do is that we pass a limit true right so we pass a limit as change in x approaches zero so when you pass the limit true then we end up with this equation here so this is the same as what we have here except that we've passed the limit true so you can see this is the limit that we've passed through right so after passing the limit true, we get this equation which is very similar to if you remember your multi calculus variable when you are trying to find the derivatives of um, <coughs> the partial derivatives of functions you realize that this here stands for f prime of c and this here stands for the partial derivative of u with respect to x this also stands for the partial derivative of v with respect to x so that means that this lengthy equation here gives us what we have here so that's what I showed you. The first part is the partial derivative of u with respect to x. And the second is the partial derivative of v with respect to x. So that means that finally we've been able to get this, which we can write without excluding this. Including this, sorry. So when we exclude these, then we will just have this, which is very simple. So we call this equation 1. And this was obtained from letting change in z be equal to change in x i hope that's understandable if you don't get it instantly don't worry try and play the video and think through you realize it's very understandable and you know this can be written as this it's just changing the form when you have del u del y it can be written as u subscript y so that's what i've written here Right, so this happens to be the first equation when we let change in z be equal to change in x. So the next thing we are going to do is, remember we said we are going to do the complex differentiation in two different ways. We've done the first way, we are coming to do it in the second way. So in the second way what we do is that we set change in z to be equal to i change in y. That's the imaginary part. Okay, And we play the same game. So we use the same difference quotient. So we just go to the same processes we went when we found the complex differentiation in the first way. Okay. So it's just that wherever you find change in z, we are going to put i change in y instead of the change in s that we used in the first way. So doing that is going to give us what we have here. All right. So you realize that with this, this i here will cancel this i. But here we are going to get all this expression over this i here. So that's what you can see here. So when we simplify this, then we get this equation here. So we have 1 over i here. Then u, whatever we have here, you could see. So i cancels i. Right? Then when you come here, we have to you know evaluate 1 over i. And we can only do this by recalling from our complex numbers so in the complex numbers y over i is equal to negative i and the reason why this is so is that when you have 1 over i and you want to compute this you rationalize it okay so you multiply through by i and by i 
So when you do that, you realize that you are going to get 1 times i all over i squared. And we know that i squared is the same as negative 1. So that's the definition of what a complex number is. So this is going to give us i over negative 1, which will give us negative i. So after doing this computation, then that means instead of 1 over i, we are going to get negative i. So we get this particular equation here where this is the imaginary part and this is the real part. And passing the limit through, just like how we did for the first one, you realize that we are going to get f prime of z will be equal to. So this place will be the partial derivative of v with respect to y. And this will be the partial derivative of u with respect to y. And that's the equation that we have here. So we can exclude these to make it very simple. So in its simple form, we have this, which is equation 2, which can also be written in this form. I've already given the explanation for that. Alright, so now we have two equations, right? So this is equation 2, and we have equation 1 here. So the next thing to do is to compare the real and the imaginary parts of equation 1 and equation 2. So to make the right simple, I've written the equation 1 here, and this is the equation 2. So we are going to compare the real component and also compare the imaginary component. So note that these are the real components and these are the imaginary components. Alright, so taking a look at it and making a comparison, that means comparing the real parts. So this is from comparing the real parts. We will have del u del x will be equal to del v and del y and we call this equation a then comparing the imaginary part so we are going to get del v and del x will be equal to negative del u del y so del v and del x will be equal to negative del u del y okay and some people try to interchange the negative so um, do you multiply it by negative and they write this in this form del u del y is equal to negative del v del x but note that this is the same these two are the same so if you don't see this you see this and it's the same thing so these two equations say equation a and equation b are what we call the couch riemann equations okay and they are what help us to be able to find out whether a given function is analytic or not so here yeah, equations a and b are called the couch Riemann equations for u and v and we use this to show if a given function is analytic or not right so in our next video we'll be talking about um analytic functions so we will talk about analytic functions again and in this case we are not going to derive the formula but we're going to use a formula that we've derived to solve questions to find out whether a given function is analytic or not right so before this you can revise your um, partial derivatives because we are going to use that a lot so thank you very much for watching this video and um, if you don't understand anything you can always go back and play the video to make sure you get everything so I'm going to kind read off a final year student of Matthias and the King, Kamen Kuma, Invasor of Science and Technology. Thank you for watching.